When you meditate, keep your mouth slightly open, as if about to say a deep, relaxing sound. Before meditation, or during breaks at work or in daily life, we can often take deep breaths, because we are often disturbed by delusions, distractions and afflictions. In our daily life, we can often take deep breaths, inhaling through the nose and exhaling through the mouth, with a deep, relaxing and soft sound. This is what people call sighing. Sighing is actually good for health. I once heard of an old lady who was asked about her secret to living a healthy and long life. She said, my favourite thing is sighing. Sighing is actually a way to release our afflictions and delusions, to protect ourselves. It may not come naturally to us though. Now we can actively take deep breaths, similar to sighing, which can greatly benefit our health. Because when afflictions arise, our minds become agitated and anxious. Actively visualize and let go of your current attachments, delusions or afflictions. While visualizing like this, let go with the help of breathing. This is a good method. Breathing through the mouth can dispel the scattered karmic winds that cause afflictions. When you have lots of wandering thoughts, you can do this deep breathing a few times to relax. We can also do this before meditation. Breathe deeply for a few minutes to relax. Let go of all the afflictions and attachments in our daily life and then start meditation. This is a good warm-up. Rest your hands comfortably covering your knees. This is called the mind in comfort and ease posture. The mudra of Sakyamuni Buddha is one hand placed palm up at the navel and the other hand hanging down as if guiding. The mudra of Amitabha Buddha is both hands placed together in the Samadhi mudra. Each Buddha's mudra is different, representing their different aspirations and vows. This posture can inspire our confidence, openness and compassion, because somehow we know that we all have the Buddha nature. So when you assume this posture, you are playfully imitating a Buddha. This is because when you imitate the Buddha's posture, subconsciously you naturally think of the Buddha and the blessings of all Buddhas and Bodhisattvas merge into your mind. When meditating, don't bend or lean. By sitting properly, like the Buddha, your negative thoughts and wandering thoughts will naturally decrease or disappear. At the same time, you still recognize your relative condition. But because you have let yourself be inspired by a joyful trust in your inherent Buddha nature, you can accept your negative aspects more easily and deal with them more kindly and with more humour. Likewise, when dealing with our flaws, we should be kind and humorous. In this way, we will also be kind and humorous towards others' flaws. If we are too harsh on ourselves, we will also be harsh and narrow-minded towards others. We shouldn't indulge in our flaws and negative thoughts, but we should treat them with kindness and humour. It's like treating a cute puppy. Seeing it can instantly brighten our mood 
and trigger our compassion. Similarly, when dealing with our flaws in this way, we will become forgiving, kind and humorous immediately. When you meditate, then invite yourself to feel the dignity and strong humility of the Buddha that you are. The so-called dignity is to imitate the Buddha and the humility is the Buddha's equal great love. We will feel it. Of course, a method is only a method, not the meditation itself. As you continue to practice a method, then meditation slowly arises. Meditation is not something that you can do or contrive, but is integrated naturally. It is something that has to happen spontaneously only when the practice has been perfected. Therefore, when you meditate, don't be attached to when you will enter meditation, as it happens naturally. It's like a seed planted in the soil. Slowly it will grow and sprout. As it is said, meditation is not striving, but naturally becoming assimilated into it. Just use the right method. When the meditative experience arises, don't be too excited or attached to it, because as long as you use the right method, feelings and signs will naturally arise. When feelings and signs arise, ordinary beings often forget the method and become attached to these states. The curiosity, fear, or attachment to these experiences are all wrong. We shouldn't forget the method of meditation, but should always use the right method. In this way, meditation will naturally arise. However, for meditation to happen, calm and auspicious conditions have to be created. Nowadays, beginners may not have the opportunity to live in the mountains, and the mountains are not quiet either. The most calm and auspicious environment is actually in our urban meditation centres. A pure monastic community is essential. We often say that we need to rely on the community. If you meditate at home, you won't be able to concentrate when you see your beloved family members. When you see your grandchildren, husband and children, how can you meditate? You cannot calm down. Once we have found a stability in our meditation, noises and disturbances of every kind will have far less impact. Through long-term practice, disturbances will have less impact. The Masters say, if you create an auspicious condition in your body and your environment, then meditation and realisation will automatically arise. Of course, for people with heavy karmic obstacles and many afflictions, with strong attachment to money, fame, gain, etc., it's difficult to sit still in meditation. When you sit down, you're basically consumed by wandering thoughts. It's better for such people to do more good deeds, give alms, serve others, cultivate renunciation, listen to teachings on renunciation and meditate on the three kinds of suffering and impermanence. Without good renunciation, it's difficult to achieve good results in meditation. It's better for you to do some voluntary work and listen to the Dharma. Sitting there is wasting your time and daydreaming also consumes your energy. You are basically only creating negative karma, while others might think that you are practicing diligently. 
you are wasting time and offerings. It's better for you to listen to the Dharma. The Buddhas and Buddhasattvas are teaching you the Dharma, which can eliminate your karma. That's why we are advised to listen to the Dharma and chant prayers more, such as Amitabha prayer and Manjushri prayer. Chanting them can eliminate a lot of karma because at least you are meditating according to the prayer. If you sit there thinking, I'm going to meditate, then you're basically creating negative karma, wasting your life and not reducing any negative karma. If you have too many attachments that you can't let go of, you won't meditate well. Therefore, we need to cultivate renunciation, no self, and Buddha Chitta, which can help us meditate. If we make stable progress in these three aspects, it won't be difficult to enter meditation. In short, as long as you master the right methods, meditation is not difficult and will arise naturally. Therefore, when you cannot enter meditation, you need to examine your mind. What are you still clinging to? What are you still worried about? We need to examine ourselves and then repent sincerely. After thorough repentance, meditation will naturally arise. Okay, that's all for today.